in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Dear sisters and brothers, welcome to this Mass. We are now following since your houses. Thank you so much for staying connected. And set a moment right now to uh, consecrate to God this day all your efforts. And we pray the Lord this morning that you, all of you keep yourselves safe and as well for all the first responders and workers, electrical workers who are working really hard on these days. Let us to start our Mass and recognizing our sins before the Lord. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please take your seats. From the book of Genesis. The Lord God called Adam and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? Had you have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat? The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banished from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly you shall crow, and there you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head while you strike at his heel. To the woman, he said, I will intensify the pains of your childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. To the man, he said, because if you listened to your wife and ate from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat, cursed be the ground because of you. In toil you eat its ill all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth from to you, as you eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face should, shall you get bread to eat until you return to the ground from which you were taken, for you are dirt, and to dirt you shall return. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. For the man and his wife, the Lord God, made leather garments, which he clothed them. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing what is good and what is evil. Therefore, he must not be allowed to put out his hand to take fruit from the tree of life also, and thus eat of it and live forever. The Lord God therefore banished him from the garden of Eden to, until the ground from which he had been taken. When he expelled the man, 
He said of him, is of the Garden of Eden, and he is stationed the cherubim at the fiery revolving sword to guard the way of the tree of life. The word of the Lord. We respond. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten, and the earth and the world were brought forth, when everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turned men back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they were like a changing grass, which a dawn springs of new, but in evening quilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In those days, when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, because they had been with me for three days and had nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse on the way, and some of them had come from a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, How many dogs do you have? They replied, Seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then, taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They also had few fish. He set the blessing over them and ordered them to be distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got it in the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanuta. The Gospel of the Lord. Please stay your seats. Well, dear sisters and brothers, in this snowy morning, it looks like it gets the, a lot of snow around here. I remember yesterday, uh, last night, on Thursday as well, I moved the, uh, the snow on this area and I put salt and it looks clean, clean, clean. And I came this morning, it's like I did nothing. It looks like many of your houses, and I, I, I wish that you are okay. And I, uh, my advice to you, uh, as a former resident in Wisconsin, <laughs> that I did a two years in the study in Sacred Heart, uh, it's going to rain very soon, uh, between today and tomorrow, 
So the best choice to you is if you have a snow and you plan to move, better to start to removing a little bit of your snow because it's going to become ice and it's going to be really hard to move your doors and maybe your, uh, your garage and that's the best choice. And if you have salt, uh, praise to the Lord because now it's really difficult to find. So uh, consider that and keep put your eyes on the exits of your heat, of your electric uh, system and everything is okay as well because it's gonna keep really cold in a few coming 24 hours or more. So dear sisters and brothers, today we had this first reading of Genesis, which reminds us that the consequence of sins is not just for the one who ate it, but it's also for the ones who are surrounded. There is not such a thing that we can find a sin that is just affecting myself. Even it looks like I don't affect anybody, but affects your concentration, affect your uh, capacity to relate to one another, your confidence. When somebody messes up just with him or herself, apparently it doesn't matter too much. But when a sin is repeated so many times, it gets a struggle with the person. And the person finds themselves with more anger, more desperation, with more insecurities and then it affects his relationship with the others and the most important thing is the relationship with God. When a person embraces the sin so many times, he becomes like the one who hears only the easy path that the serpent offers. Today we heard about the serpent too many times and we can imagine the nice snake, you know, over there. But it's just a story. The, the, when we hear the Genesis, it's a theological story, which makes us to wonder that the evil is always around us, expecting the moment when we are alone. If we see the characters and make reflections really deeply, we can find where was Adam? Did he hear his voice? Could he protect his wife, uh, Eve? Where was Eve? When she was confused, she was alone. She was the, in the moment when she can be the perfect prey for the lights of the serpent. So this is not a blame for the women or for the men. It's the blame for any one of us who permit that somebody else falls on sin and don't rescue him and don't give a good advice. Because this was the separation. They were like a unit. Where is the, now the consequence of this is that we are expelled in the reception of this grace and we have to fight for it even more. We can be connected with the Lord because he's a refuge as we say and we heard sorry about this on the responsorial song. He has been a refuge. He didn't abandon us. But for a moment, time to time, we have to face the consequences of our own sins. And it's going to be really hard. Times I had experience of people who feel very sorry for their sins. And we empower them to move forward, to trust in the mercy of God, and continue with the confidence that the Lord has forgotten and has forgiven you for all the sin. And you get that, but you still you have to face some consequences, some um, things that came after your sin. It's not easy to say, well, everything is going to be fine. Well, if you have done certain things with your mom and dad, with your husband, your wife, if you lie, you steal, if you say something wrong, if you insult, if you did something against the person you love most, and even when you came to confession, that memory is still there. The sin is still there. We implant a wound in the mind of somebody else. That's not so much easy to say, job is confession, look at the confession, you are done. We are okay, we are in peace. Yeah, but the memory is still there. But we need to rebuild again the confidence. 
We need to rebuild again the trust, especially with ourselves. So their sisters and brothers, we have to see that after we go to confession, certain sins has been to be remeditated. Not that uh, why uh, if I have doubts on my sin, no, but how can I avoid it and how can it do not affect the others as well? Because when we come to confession, it can be easy to say, well, I did my part. That they said, this is not happening with you. But some time to time, we can, we can see it. The priest can see that, well, you came to confession and you can leave. You know, I had a headache, I take a pill, I get my, I don't have any more headache, I am fine. Yes, but the headache comes back again. Why? So the sisters and brothers, the sin has to be overlooked. We have to analyze why we fall and fall again the same thing, the same matter. What is the reason? So right now that you are in home, you can make a lot of resolutions. Oh, well, now I have to see, for example, I have been so reluctant with my house. Now I feel that I really need to repair this. Now I am afraid that maybe I need to check the electrical thing. Maybe I have to change the, the, the bulbs on the outside. Now I can see that really my house needs maintenance. Now I can see that. But because we are not ready, for example, for the snow. But now that you're ready for, uh, for the snow after this, you can remember that the planet weather is changing so much that maybe the maintenance of the house is not much a crazy thing to invest. So makes sense. For, oh, I have to move the, uh, the snow. <laughs> I, maybe I need to recheck that I need more exercise to be more energized to do this physical work. Maybe. Well, now is the COVID-19 go out, but I am maybe need to check on my immune system. So the sisters and brothers, we have to be responsible. And because you are in home and you don't have to move, you kept working, I abuse more than this time because you are in home. Please don't complain. In the gospel right now, we are seeing the mercy of Jesus for the ones who have, by their decision, Follow. And after days of preaching, some people remain very really faithful. That's what happens when somebody finds the ma their master, find the Lord, and says, I want to learn more, I want to study more. But then you can get distracted from other specific and elementary needs. And that is when they find themselves with hunger. And Jesus says, Well, I have to move. But these people are hungry. I don't want to send them away. So the responsibility is from him passed to his disciples. What are you going to give to them? Well, where we can find bread for a lot of people. We can easily say, that's not my problem. But Jesus offered them a solution, but makes from them be part of that solution. What do you have? So the sister and brother, well, seven lots of bread. Well, bring me those things. At least you had something to give to somebody else. So this is what is a deserted place. He even with a lot of things around, with not many trees, he made the miracle. To make us to uh, think today, even when we are now in your house, uh, secluded by the snow, we have to be thankful for what we have. For even for that can that you open and cook it, but you have something. What do you have to make these moments less stressful? Well, let us to plan again. Let us to clean the house. Let us to move the snow. What do you can do for the others? That is what we start to make miracles. With the little thing, with the little attitude you can offer, my dear sister and brother. Because if I expect that somebody else do the thing for me, it's going to take for a long time. We have to be pending for the other. Like Jesus said, 
give me those seven breaths. And then, now, let us pray, and now you distribute that seven breaths. So there is no such a thing like a, a rest for my sister and my brother. We have to keep continuing. And I thank God for all those groups who make their uh, ministry, for example, in our parties and this and the ball, for those ones who work on the food distribution uh, by the boxes we give every Friday, which yesterday was cancer. For every one of you who also support the poor, bless be the God. But it's not just about writing a check, as I said, it's also an encounter because maybe the others can be poor of money. Maybe I need to a little bit poor of a spiritual growth. So I need to be growing in my confidence with the Lord. So dear sisters and brothers, I wish to stay well and I wish that the Lord increase in us the awareness that not only sin affect the other not affect me, but affect the others. And the same way the well-being of the others is a responsibility that I have to take care for too. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us pray to Christ the Lord not only for ourselves, but for our own needs, but for the entire people. For the whole Christian people, let us beseech the abundance of divine goodness, we pray to the Lord. For all who do not yet believe, let us implore the giver of all spiritual gifts to give the experience of his love, we pray to the Lord. For those who hold public office, let us call upon the power of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters, who cannot be present here in this Mass, and they are following this Mass in their homes, may you and all your beloved ones receive the blessings of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all of us who pray in faith and ask the mercy of the Lord, let us entreat the compassion of our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Incline your merciful, your merciful ears to our prayers, we ask the Lord and listen in kindness the supplication of those who call on you through Christ our Lord. Please take your seat. Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, fruit of the earth, and work human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our plea and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you had no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. And so, in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as we joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy death this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them, that the youth, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, the Father Church of our Pastor, and all the clergy. Remember also, O oh Lord, all the families who are watching this Mass, for all our parishioners who now are staying in their house. Bless them, O Lord, and protect them, keep them safe. Keep them up as well, O Lord, well provided, and protect all the workers who are now are outside, for the electric workers, for third responders, and for those who also support the movement of our city. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we make merry to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the hope of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, Lord, be with you always. In your house, with your heart, with your kids, anything you want, you let us keep one another in safe manner, of course, a sign of peace. Give you peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Dear sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Yo, I am not worthy you shall enter into my will, but only say a word, and the soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I decide to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually to my heart in my home. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separate from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who hath willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Well, 
uh, you can take your seat if you are already uh, stand. Well, as an as announcement, uh, I can tell you what is the decision for tomorrow mass uh, uh, here in the premises. It's really snowing and it's still snow right now. Uh, as I can tell, it was really hard to walk around from the house to here. I can't open my door, so uh, the good thing I wake up early and start to moving and shovel all this uh, snow in to make a path. So it's gonna be really high still. Uh, the levels maybe I had walking between seven inches to 12, 14 inches of snow, uh, depending on the concentration of places. So it's not very safe to drive, honestly. And for the masses tomorrow, we are going to publish uh, maybe between today evening what are the uh, the decisions. Maybe of obviously we can uh, follow it by um, live streaming. Maybe also first uh, Sunday tomorrow. Um, maybe uh, over this evening, Father Charles and I will going to talk about it and give you some uh, directions by this uh, uh, Facebook or maybe in our web page, uh, maybe for flop notes. Uh, but be pending of what we are going to follow the masses. And if there is a kind of distribution of communion. We're going to see it because it's really, as I said, there is no vehicles over. I see the moving the snow for the main road, so uh, we have to be really mindful that it may be possible that we can go to church this weekend. But at least to check your forecast, keep yourself safe and sound, and as well uh, follow the uh, the last uh, announcements we can give about uh, about these. Uh, uh, we can, uh, we keep praying for all of you. Um, uh, I wish that you are now uh, resting, you don't have any trouble with your electric energy, um, you have the food that you need. Uh, keep praying the Lord that this weather is uh, almost over, maybe by the next 48 hours. But for now, uh, keep following us in Facebook, on our website, and we will Keep praying for the chance of myself for you and let us to see you very soon. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a blessed and safe day.